Hey guys, today we'll be talking about how to crush the Sicilian defense specifically after Black's second move with pawn to d6. So the Sicilian defense starts off with the moves e4, c5, knight f3, d6. Now instead of playing the main line with pawn to d4 or other popular lines like the alapin with pawn to c3 followed by pawn to d4, we are going to introduce you this move here with bishop to c4. The whole idea of this move is simple. We develop our bishop so that we can castle as soon as possible and our bishop on c4 puts pressure on this pawn on f7. So here in this position, according to the database, the most popular moves here are knight to f6 and pawn to e6. So let's first take a look at what if black plays the move knight f6. Now we are going to push our e pawn forward with pawn to e5. After captures, we capture back with the knight. And as you guys can see, we are attacking this pawn on f7. The only move for black to defend the f7 pawn is by playing pawn to e6. Now, again, a key move in this variation against the Sicilian is to play the move queen to e2. So we delay castling for one move, but instead we bring the queen out to put additional pressure on the black's king along this diagonal. For example, we have threats like sacrificing our knight on f7, knight takes f7, king takes, and our bishop and our queen are attacking this pawn on e6. So now black has three options. He can play bishop e7, he can play bishop d6, or knight b to d7. And three of these moves are the most played moves according to the Lee Chess database. So first, let's take a look at knight b d7. At first glance, it might seem that it's a normal developing natural move for black, offering a trade of knights since our knight on e5 is quite strong, putting pressure on the black's position. However, as you guys can see from the evaluation bar on the left, the, co the computer's evaluation suddenly shot up because knight b to d7 is a blunder due to the idea that I mentioned earlier in the intro, which is knight takes f7, sacrificing the knight. After king takes, Queen takes e6 check comes and the king cannot retreat anywhere backwards. He's forced to go to king to g6. Now, the key move here to remember is to play this nice move with pawn to h4. The idea of pawn to h4 is simple. We want to push our pawn forward to give check. The knight can't capture the pawn because it's in pin by our queen. And after pawn to h5 check on the next move, the king is forced to go either to h6 or to g5 in which we just play pawn to d3 or pawn d4 giving check with our dark squared bishop and it's really almost impossible for black to defend in this position because for example if black tries to prevent pawn to h5 by playing h5 himself we have checkmate in just three moves with bishop to d3 check king has to go to h6 only move queen e3 check pawn to g5 blocks only move and Queen takes g5 is checkmate. If black tries to defend with pawn to h6 instead, trying to retreat here to this square after we play pawn to h5 check. Now, instead of pawn to h5, we're going to play bishop to d3 check first, taking away the h7 square. The king has no moves but to play king to h5. Now, we play queen to f5 check. Pawn to g5 is the only blocking move. And after pawn takes pawn, we have checkmate by pawn due to our rook on h1, giving discovered check. So as you guys can see, this simple but tricky variation against the Sicilian defense is quite effective against your opponents as there are tricky lines like this in which if your opponent has never seen or played them before, they might lose quickly in just a few moves. But before we continue, if you're finding this content valuable and want to see more videos like this, Please take a moment to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. Your support enables us to continue creating amazing chess content for you. So let's go back to this position and instead of knight b to d7, let's take a look at what if black plays the move bishop e7, another natural developing move and black can castle on the next move. So here we just castle and after black castles, we have this nice move rook to e1, putting further pressure along the e-file, bringing our rook, potential, potentially bringing our rook into the attack as well. And just a fun fact, according to the Lee Chess database, 
Rook to E1 is at an impressive 69% win rate for white. So here, black has not many options actually. If he tries to develop his knight with knight to c6, we can just capture the knight. And after pawn takes, now we see that black's queenside pawns are destroyed and isolated, which are pretty easy weaknesses for us to attack. We can play moves like knight here, knight to c3, pawn to b3, knight to a4, followed by bishop a3, putting tremendous pressure on the doubled c pawns. And it's very difficult for black to defend the position. So black can try to play the move pawn to a6 here, trying to push up his b pawn and potentially playing c4 on the next move, trapping our bishop. So we can't let black play the move pawn to b5, and we need to play pawn to a4 ourselves, preventing this pawn to b5 move. Now, as you guys can see from black's perspective, it's actually not easy for him to bring out his pieces. So now knight to b this knight b to d7 is a very natural move for black, and it's also the most played move according to the database. However, here we have a really nice attack threat as white with knight takes f7, similar ideas to what we mentioned earlier. After rook takes, we capture on e6 and our bishop and our queen threatening the rook and pinning the rook to the king as well. Black can play queen to f8, protecting the rook. And at first glance, it might seem that there's nothing better than to capture the rook. And essentially, we'll be giving up two pieces for a rook and two pawns. However, there's an even stronger move with queen takes e7. And now we see the power by playing rook to e1. The rook supports the queen to capture the bishop on e7, and black cannot capture our queen with the rook because his king is in pin. So after queen takes, rook takes e7, again, the rook can't capture because of the pin, and none of black's pieces can defend the rook on f7 without losing material. So this is an easy win for white. However, that's one important thing to note here is that, surprisingly enough, the computer says that a better move for black in this position is to capture with the king instead of the rook. And now we need to capture the e6 pawn with our bishop instead and the king goes to e8 and hides this way. So yeah, pretty weird setup for black according to the computer, but don't worry because now we have this nice brilliant idea with rook to a3. We bring our rook up this way to join the attack as our rook can go to d3 to pin the knight to the queen. Our rook can go to e3 to triple up along the e-file and attack the bishop and the king or our rook can even go to g3 and attack this pawn on g7. And this position already is very difficult for black to play because for example, if he plays a move like knight to b6, trying to trade off the bishops, we just play rook to d3 attacking the queen. And after the queen moves to the side, we have another brilliant move with bishop to d7 check, blockading the queen from the defense of the e7 bishop. And we are threatening to capture the bishop on e7 with checkmate in one. Black cannot capture our bishop with any of the minor pieces because that would just result in checkmate with queen takes e7. So he has to capture with the queen and we just capture the rook. And this again is easy win for us as we are still threatening queen takes e7 checkmate. So the best defense for black according to the engine goes something like this. Bishop to, sorry, bishop to d6. Now we play bishop to h3, giving discovered check on the king. Black plays knight to e5, and here we just play pawn to f4, pinning the knight and winning the knight on the next move. So although this is the best defensive resource for black, according to the computer, as we can see, we're already plus 2.2 up in this position, and we still have the similar attacking threats with rook to d3 or rook to e3 with serious pressure on the black king. Now you might be wondering, we, are, we were able to play the move rook to a3 because Black played a6 and we replied with pawn to a4 previously in the position. So what if we had we did not play pawn to a4 and we no longer have this brilliant attacking move with rook to a3? So we return to this position and instead of a6, a4, knight to d7, and then we capture on f7, what if black played knight d7 immediately, which is also one of the most played moves in this variation. Now same idea, we capture on f7, if rook takes, queen takes, queen f8, queen takes e7 is the same line that we saw earlier. So we need to discuss what if black captures with the king instead. Now again, we capture the pawn on e6 with check, king to e8, and 
as you guys can see, since we did not play a4, we no longer have rook to a3. However, don't worry because even though we sacrifice a knight for two pawns, we are still having the h in this position because black's pieces are really cramped and the king is kind of stuck in the center even though black castled earlier. So we just have to play normal developing moves like pawn to d3, bring out our bishop, we can play bishop g5, bishop to f4, potentially bring it to d6, utilizing the pin, or even bishop to e3, trying to put pressure on the c5 pawn. Now after a move like knight to b6, offering a trade of bishops, we don't really want to trade pieces because that would just help black to develop his pieces, and instead we want to retreat our bishop to keep our light square bishop in the attack. So after a move like bishop to g4, black tries to develop his bishop and attack our queen at the same time. But don't worry because we just move our queen forward. And as you guys can see, this pin along the e file on the black bishop puts serious pressure on black's position. The queen can never move away from the defense of the bishop, otherwise it will just be checkmate in one. And we are also threatening to capture this pawn on c5, utilizing the pin. So let's say black plays a move like rook to c8, protecting the pawn on c5. We just develop our bishop, and if black plays a move like rook c7, trying to bring in his rook to defend his bishop, we already have knight to b5, attacking the rook, rook d7, pawn to h3, kicking away the bishop, bishop retreat, and bishop e6, and this rook is already trapped. So some of these moves that we have demonstrated are some of the top computer moves, and you guys can see that it's really difficult for a normal human to defend in this position as black. Alright, so we have discussed knight to d7 and bishop to e7, and now we need to take a look at what if black plays bishop d6, which is the most active and accurate move for black. So here, we, we just castle, and after castle, we are going to play this aggressive move with pawn to f4, further supporting our knight on e5, establishing this strong outpost, and later on, we have attacking ideas by bringing our rook up, rook to f3, and rook to g3, or even rook to h3, putting pressure along the g and h files. So again, whenever black tries to play pawn to a6, pushing up his pawn to b5, we always want to play pawn to a4, preventing that move. Now, if black plays a move like knight to c6, we just capture, and after captures, the black's double pawn on the c file, and the broken up pawn structure on the queen side will cause significant weaknesses in the black's position. So black could try to play queen to c7 first, putting pressure on our e5 knight, and also preparing to play knight to c6. Now the important thing to remember is how do we set up our position for potential attacking chances against the black king. So first we play pawn to b3, and we are going to develop the bishop this way instead. Our bishop on b2 would be a really important and strong sniper, protecting our knight on e5, and also creating threats along the f6 or the g7 square later on. Black continues with knight to c6, we just trade off the knights, and play bishop to b2, attacking the knight on f6. Now, black can actually ignore our threat of bishop takes f6, and play quite a strong move with pawn to b6 himself, developing his bishop this way, and putting pressure on our g2 square, because if we capture our his knight on f6 too early, this would not be great for us because after pawn takes, even though it looked like black's king is exposed along the g file and we can give queen to g4 check, it's actually bad for us because he can just move the king to the side and it is actually black that is utilizing the g file to attack us instead with moves like rook to g8 and bishop to b7 putting tremendous pressure on our g2 pawn. So just be careful and we do not want to capture the knight on f6 too early. Instead, we just finish our development and instead of playing knight to c3, blocking our own bishop, we do not want that and we play knight to a3 instead. Although the knight on a3 looks like it's on the edge of the board and it's not doing anything at the moment, this knight will eventually be able to join the attack later on as we are going to play bishop to d3 on the next move, utilizing this diagonal instead and that frees up the square on c4 for our knight to jump, which attacks the black bishop, and also potentially jumping to e5, creating a strong outpost. So for example, black plays bishop to b7, we just 
continue developing our last remaining piece, which is the rook. So we bring the rook in, rook a to e1. And since all our pieces are already developed, we are ready to mobilize our pieces to launch an attack on the black's king. Another important thing to note that the rook, black's rook on a8 is actually tied down to the defense on the pawn to a6 because if he were to play a move like rook d8, we can just capture the a6 pawn as the bishop is protected by our queen. So if black plays a normal developing move like rook f to d8, now we put our plan into motion with bishop to d3. Both our bishops are really powerful along this diagonal. We would be able to bring in our knight to c4, attacking the bishop and also bringing our knight to e5 in certain positions. But the immediate threat in this case would be to capture on f6 immediately because after captures, captures, we have queen to d sorry, queen to g4 check, king moves, and then bishop to e4 attacking the queen. So the possibilities of attacking chances in this position is endless. And as you guys can see from the evaluation bar on the left, it already shows that it's a plus one advantage for white in this position. Now, lastly, we need to go back to the starting position. And we've seen what if white plays the move knight f6, which is the most popular move in this position. The second most popular line is pawn to e6, trying to block off this diagonal with the bishop. Now here we play the move queen to e2 with similar ideas and the move queen to e2 also prevents black from playing pawn to d5 because after captures, black cannot capture back as our queen is pinning the king. So if black were to play a move like knight to f6, which is also the most popular move in this position, we just play e5 and this would just transpose to the position that we mentioned earlier on where black has the option to play knight d7, bishop e7, or bishop to d6. And if black plays a move like knight to c6 instead, now we no longer have the e5 push, but we just play normal chess with a move like pawn to c3, knight f6, pawn to d4, and after captures, captures, white's position is definitely better as our center pawns are pushed more forward. Our knights and bishops can be easily developed into the game. We can castle anytime we want. And black's position is more cramped as his pawns on d6 and e6 limit the moves of his own bishops. And that wraps up our video on crushing the Sicilian defense after the second black move with pawn to d6. We've explored various strategies and tactics to gain the upper hand against this popular opening. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more chess content. Share your thoughts and your favorite moves in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and we see you in the next video.